normally I don't get involved in a lot of films until pretty late, until the film is shot and they're cutting the film. But on this one, I was able to be involved really early before they shot anything. Um, so the first discussions I had about the film were in general um, about what the feeling of the film was going to be. I got to go early on to the art department where they were designing some people from Stanley Kubrick who had worked on the film for years before were still working on the look of the film. So I got to spend a day looking at the designs of what the cities would look like and the characters and the vehicles. So that was fantastic. Just gave me a great idea what the film was going to be like. From the time I read the script, it was pretty obvious that the movie broke into these three distinct sections, uh, each with their own feeling. Since I was involved early on, we had time to record a lot of new material. So we were able to start a long time ago recording robotic sounds, interesting little futuristic motors that we could use. But what I found myself mostly doing is taking any source material I could and making it, making a, a palette of musical sound effects or, or tonal sound effects for everything. Like the vehicles are electric vehicles, but they sound very musical. So the sounds in the movie are made up of a lot of original recordings we were able to start making a long time ago. The best way I, I find to work with Stephen is to show him stuff, to get reactions. One of the first things I did, which was really fun and unique for me, was to come up with voices for some of the characters in the movie that are a robot in the movie. Can you kind of shoot me over the propeller thing? Or a special effect in the movie. Starving minds, welcome to Dr. No. So I looked for interesting voices and would try them against some early pictures and send those to Stephen to see what he thought. Go to her, David. She's just waking up this instant. Teddy, Teddy, come, come here. There's so many different scenes that have a different quality to them. We have a wide variety of scenes from this really gritty, realistic, noisy scene of the flesh fair. Where essentially robots are being destroyed in a uh, carnival atmosphere in ritualistic, huge ways. It's wild, it's crazy, it's cacophony, it's uh, reality at its grittiest and scariest. You have been searching for me, haven't you, David? And then at the other end of the spectrum, the blue fairy appears to David at the end of the film, and it, everything is, you're not even sure what's real and what's dreamlike or imagined. It all adds up to a very unique tone. So my job now is to try to emulate that or to support that with the sound each step of the way so that the sound is doing the same thing. Your wish is my command. Teddy, this is David. Hello, Teddy. Hello, David. <clears throat> when I first read the script and talked to Stephen, he, he had this idea of the Teddy character, since he's a small little teddy bear, but he wanted to have this older, wise, flat voice. Martin, no. And he kept mentioning Eeyore. He liked the feeling of Eeyore. It's not exactly right, but he liked that evenness of tone. I see the moon. In the midst of all this strange goings on and even danger to have this little teddy bear speak in a very calm adult tone it would be a relaxing thing for a companion to a child what happened i don't know we are in a cage so what i did early on is look for interesting voices people actors we are in a cage and i even took snippets from movies uh, from more famous actors, and I cut them against some early face tests for Teddy just to get a feeling. And I would send them to Stephen, and he would react. And he finally picked Jack Angel, who was a uh, voice actor. He really caught the spirit of that uh, wisdom and calm. Be careful, David. This is not a toy. Almost a uh, flat counterpoint to all the craziness going on around. What I do is I work on a um, synclavier, which is a keyboard that can play sound effects. And so uh, uh, the 
this for this movie I've been doing a lot of things. This is a choir of kids that just You can use it for, say, underwater and Fibicopter passes by. Instead of a normal sound, you could just do uh, something with this. So you can take these tonalities, which are from musical sources, kids singing, and turn them into these very musical sound effects. AI is pushing the sound in a very almost psychological way, which I love. It doesn't hurt. The power of sound really is in its emotional aspect. It, it, it gets to us, like music, sound, all types of sound, I think, have a direct connection to our emotions. With all the various things in AI, the most important part that the sound plays is to make us experience through David, through his character experience the magic and the fright and the wonder and the confusion. And then because it's a fable, it becomes magical in a very uh, strong way.